When I retired from the game, it was one of those things where you're trying to find what you want to do next. So much of my mind was consumed with the competition and I would wake up in the morning eating breakfast thinking about that pitcher that I was going to face that night. When all that goes away, it, there's a big void there that you have to fill and I think it was, it was a hard time for me to, to figure out what I wanted to do next. Growing up as a kid in Canada, I had this dream of one day putting on an NHL jersey and hoisting the Stanley Cup, which very few people actually get to do. And, you know, I ended up not working out that way. I ended up being a better baseball player than I was a hockey player, but the passion for the game never left me and, and the desire, even though throughout my baseball career, it was always written into the contract, no hockey, no skating. So I had to kind of put it off for about 10 years. And finally, the opportunity was presented to me that I could have a professional grade rink in my backyard with the glycol running underneath the ice. I have the chillers that you would see on an indoor rink to cool the water down and, and start making ice before it was available really almost anywhere else in the States. To be able to walk away from your dream and then eventually get back to it and then be able to skate with some of the best in the world is a pretty special thing. Oh. It's surprising to me to see how many guys show up once a week you know, former Major League Baseball players, you know, to have, to have Joe Maurer and, and Corey Kosky come out and then former NHL players, you know, Mark Parrish is usually a regular, Paul Martin, Jordan Leopold, Blake Sloan's been a new addition. For our game, obviously we want to make it fair. It's, that's not going to be fun for somebody to come out and to have three baseball guys against three former NHL guys and, and you know, to lose every game. So it's usually Canada, USA, which usually splits up myself and Joe Maurer end up on opposite teams, so then you have a baseball guy on either side, and then there are a few former NHL guys that are Canadian that we end up getting on our team. So the games end up being pretty balanced. You know, I, I told Wes Walls we're gonna need him out for the game. We need his competitiveness out there. And, you know, on the group text, he says, well, just dig deep like we always do as Canadians and go out there and find a way to win. Guys in the NHL, you know, they're best in what they did. They play down to our level, but, uh... As you can see, we're all very competitive and uh, we all like to have a good time. I was out there tonight, you know, three on three, and I'm looking around, I'm the only non-NHL guy. That was a little frightening there for a little bit, but it was fun to get out there and get a good workout in. Oh, there we go. <laughs> the competitiveness comes back at us quickly. We kind of come out here and say we don't care and we're not going to try and we're going to stand around and then the puck drops and somebody scores a goal against you and you're like, well, that wasn't fun. I want to score the goals. And uh, you know it's good. It's good fun. And obviously the uh, the baseball guys they put up quite a fight. They they've got some skill. Just don't tell them I said that. Garbage. It's over. Garbage. Where's the oxygen tank? It's over. It shouldn't hurt this much. It shouldn't hurt this much. Very few people are retired at the age of 35, and if you're lucky enough, 40. So. To be able to come in here and, and understand that there's a lot of people in the same situation trying different things. Whatever job they think is going to fill that void, there's still a competitiveness that just can't be matched when you compete at the highest level. And, and, and that's a hard thing. And I think uh, to have a group of, of people that, whether it's just to go back in time and kind of laugh with each other or to lean on and ask questions, you know, it's, it's a pretty special thing.